After my last story post, I got some questions about vagus nerve stimulation and what my thoughts were about the different available commercial units. I've been using vagus nerve stimulation for the past six to seven years in clinical practice on a variety of different patient types using a variety of different methodologies and a variety of different devices. So these are just some of my thoughts about the different devices that are available. At the end of the day, there are no direct head-to-head -head clinical trials between one method versus another, so we have no idea if one methodology is better than the other or if one device is better than the other. These are just my views on the trade-offs and the cost benefits of using each of the different available units. First up, we have auricular vagus nerve stimulation, which is basically taking an electrical stimulating device, putting some clips on it, and attaching it to two points on your ear. One option is the tragus, which is a little flap above your ear hole, and then the other is the simba concha, which is kind of the general area in the bowl of the ear next to the ear hole. Stimulating the ear has by far the most randomized clinical trials about its use for a variety of conditions like depression, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and a whole host of other conditions. You could also do this really inexpensively because you could just take a TENS unit for 60 bucks, put some ear clips on it, stick it onto your ear, and away you go. There are also clinically designed devices that are available for purchase, but I have not had any experience with those devices, so I can't comment on those necessarily. On the downside, when it comes to stimulating the ear, not everyone can actually feel the ear stimulation, which means we don't know if the stimulation is actually getting into the vagal nerve branches. So that's one thing that I saw not too common, but I did have occasional patients where no matter how high I turned up the stimulating unit, there was no effect on the ear itself. We have GammaCore or True Vega, which is made by the same company. And this is a cervical vagus nerve stimulation unit where you could basically place it onto the neck and stimulate it for bursts of about two minutes at a time. This is what I've been using in my office most recently because it's very easy to stimulate the vagus nerve and it's very consistent. And it has the best well-designed clinical trial in regards to migraine and cluster headache. And it went through all the approvals to get FDA approval for treatment of those illnesses. Downside for a little while, it was quite expensive to get one of these and you couldn't own one of these outright. So you could basically pay for it as a subscription basis, which would range from anywhere from $500 for about three months of use all the way up to about $1,500 for a year of use. But in my experience, very consistently effective for migraine headaches and some of those other headache disorders, but also has been effective for some of my POTS patients and also some of my patients with inflammatory issues. Next, we have V-Relief by Hulis. It is basically an auricular device that you can use kind of in a similar way as GammaCore, where you take the device and you place it right against the bottom portion of your ear, and you can stimulate your vagus nerve that way. I've recommended it for many patients as an at-home device because you don't have to use it as a subscription and you can own it outright for a relatively decent price at $199. A couple of downsides is that we don't necessarily have any clinical studies that support this methodology for doing vagus nerve stimulation. So we are kind of taking the product's word for it that it is stimulating the vagus nerve and it's having some of those overlapping effects. Um, the other downside is you have to buy gel tips pretty regularly in order to use it and that it is also kind of uncomfortable. So compared to other vagus nerve stimulating devices, um, this device can feel a little bit pokey or proddy against it. Not too too bad, but it is less comfortable than some of the other units. And the last one we'll talk about today is called the Pulsetto, which I found basically by you know being bombarded with ads on Instagram. Um, but it is a unit that feels fairly similar to GammaCore. You basically wear it around your neck like this, and you put some gel on there, and it can stimulate your vagus nerve like this. The coolest part about it is that it is hands-free, where GammaCore you kind of have to hold it there for two minutes. For this, you could just place it onto your neck and you just let it run for upwards of 10 to 20 minutes at a time. Um, and it has a very similar feel to what the Gamma Core does, which is a very gentle contraction of some of the muscles around your neck and none to the face and the lip. Downsides, there aren't any clinical studies that evaluate the effectiveness of Pulsetto for doing vagus nerve stimulation. And it also is a little bit more expensive than some of the other units. You're probably looking at five to $600 for this unit, although I got mine on a Black Friday sale. So if you get that sooner than later, you could actually save a pretty good amount of money on it. A couple important points. Vagus nerve stimulation is not a cure-all device. It is effective for different conditions and managing the symptoms of those conditions, but don't expect this to treat your condition independently. Like if you have rheumatoid arthritis, don't just do vagus nerve stimulation. Also take your medications, but maybe vagus nerve stimulation can help in addition to that. 
As far as safety goes, vagus nerve stimulation is largely safe with very little, if any, major side effects being reported from the non-invasive type of vagus nerve stimulation. Some people may feel a little bit lightheaded, some people may feel a little bit headachey afterwards or a little bit dizzy, but for the most part, they're very non-specific discomfort symptoms and no injuries or serious adverse events have been reported. However, if you have a pacemaker or other electrical stimulating device implanted into you, like if you have a brain stimulator or if you have a spinal cord stimulator or a pacemaker, then these devices are contraindicated for you. Lastly, a lot of these devices have marketing that say that they have specific settings that are designed to treat anxiety or sleep or pain or anything like that. But the truth of the matter is a lot of these protocols are really made up. There's really no studies or evidence that say that manipulating some of the pulse waves or anything like that really can treat all of these conditions. So as of now, to stimulate your vagus nerve, you get a lot of positive effects on your anti-inflammatory system and for neuroplasticity. But for the specific protocols to treat those conditions, there's not really anything that is support that.